Another day, another story. Welcome back YouTube fam. Join us as we uncover the details of the Ocean Gate's submersible disappearance. The U.S. Coast Guard delivered some difficult news at a Thursday, June 21, 23, afternoon press conference. Pieces of the Ocean Gate submersible vessel that had been lost for nearly five days had been found about 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic. The sub had suffered a catastrophic implosion. All five crew members are believed to be dead. Here are eight questions about the Titan, the effort to find it, and its tragic conclusion. 1. When and where did the Titanic submersible disappear? The craft, called the Titan, went missing in the North Atlantic Ocean on Sunday, June 18, 23, morning less than two hours after being deployed by a former Canadian Coast Guard icebreaker called the Polar Prince. After departing from St. John's on the eastern edge of Newfoundland on June 16, the Polar Prince dropped anchor roughly 900 miles east of Cape Cod. The sub was supposed to send out a ping every 15 minutes during its descent down to the Titanic shipwreck, nearly 13,000 feet below the ocean. The entire voyage was supposed to take just two and a half hours, but the Polar Prince lost contact with the Titan approximately an hour and 45 minutes into the trip, triggering a desperate search for the missing sub. 2. Who was on board? There were five people aboard the Titan submersible. Stockton Rush, the 61-year-old pilot. He was the founder and CEO of OceanGate Expeditions, which organized the expedition that the submersible embarked on to see the wreckage of the Titanic. Hamish Harding, a 58-year-old British billionaire with a penchant for adventuring to the extremes of the earth. Paul-Henri Nargelet, a 77-year-old former commander of the French Navy, was a deep-sea search expert who completed at least 35 dives to the wreck of the Titanic. Shazada Dawood, a 48-year-old Pakistani-British businessman and philanthropist, had joined the Titan crew with his 19-year-old son Suleiman. He was the head of the Engro Corporation, one of the largest conglomerates in Pakistan. 3. How exactly did the sub work? The Titan was not a big submersible, nor was it designed for extended periods underwater, or capable of traveling to a port without help from another vessel, as naval submarines are. The cylindrical, all-metal interior otherwise lacked seats and was approximately the size of a minivan. Because it traveled so deep in the ocean, the Titan could not use GPS and communicated with the Polar Prince through a text messaging system. It was piloted with a video game controller, which is not as weird as it sounds. Critically, the Titan submersible only had 96 hours of oxygen reserves on board. That means that as soon as the vessel went missing, the clock started ticking on remaining life support. 4. Who owns and operates the Titan sub? The Titan was operated by OceanGate Expeditions, a Washington-based private company that offers chartered deep-sea exploration for commercial and scientific purposes. The company has also become known for leading deep-sea tourism trips. OceanGate has led more than a dozen underwater trips, including to shipwrecks like the Andrea Doria, which lies up to 240 feet underwater near Nantucket. In addition to the Titan, it operates two other five-person submersibles in its fleet, Antipodes and Cyclops 1. While Antipodes and Cyclops 1 can travel just 1,000 and 1,640 feet below the surface, respectively. OceanGate says the Titan was designed to go 4,000 meters, or 13,123 feet deep. Just enough to reach the Titanic wreckage, which lies about 12,500 feet down. 5. What do we know about the search and rescue process? OceanGate contacted the Coast Guard after it lost touch with the Titan on Sunday afternoon. This kicked off what has become an international rescue effort on the water and in the air. The search yielded few updates until early Wednesday, June 21, 2023, when several maritime surveillance planes detected underwater noises, described as banging noises, in the area where the Titan went missing. 6. Why is it so difficult to explore the deepest parts of the ocean? You're probably familiar with how 70% of the Earth's surface is ocean, but its depths are a much bigger mystery. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, less than 10% of the world's ocean depths are mapped with sonar. Think of the ocean floor not as flat and even, but with geological features just like land on the surface. There are canyons, plateaus, mountains, and submarine volcanoes, among other types of formations. Crucially, the technology we have to map above ground doesn't work as well underwater. 
So beyond 50 meters of depth, you really can't know what's going on unless you're physically there. 7. How dangerous is deep sea tourism? In most cases, folks who aren't experts in deep sea exploration aren't ending up down near the sea floor. And if they are, usually they're accompanied or trained by people who know how to operate deep sea machinery and what to do in emergency. That's what made this particular incident with Ocean Gate precarious. Generally, deep sea equipment has several redundant fail safes to protect the people inside. And safety, of course, is dependent on the infrastructure and systems around an individual. 8. Why does the media care so much about this story? The quick answer to that question is that it's pretty hard to imagine people spending $250,000 to voluntarily go to an extremely dangerous place in a claustrophobic tube with no additional safety. Rich people doing something astonishingly baffling and risky is always a point of curiosity. It's a story, in the classic sense of the word. The more complex, and arguably interesting, answer is that such a search endeavor reveals how little we know about the ocean. And, yes, migrants unfortunately do go missing in oceans regularly in arduous, treacherous journeys for a better life. Outlets could do more to cover this painful issue with justice and accountability. It's a dual responsibility from news organizations and readers alike to decide what really matters. The story of the missing ocean gate serves as a reminder of the risks and uncertainties inherent in deep sea exploration. It highlights the dedication and bravery of those who push the boundaries of human knowledge, even in the face of great adversity. I hope you found the video insightful. Please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to continue supporting us. Thanks for watching.